So in this talk, we'll look at uh, three things. The first to begin with is what is chaos engineering? Why should you be interested in it? And uh, the second one is uh, Katakura, uh, how you can run litmus chaos experiments, chaos engineering experiments with litmus on Katakura. What is Katakura and how will we run the chaos uh, experiments there? Will be uh, We will take a look at that pretty soon. The third thing which we'll learn is uh, or look at is uh, the litmus portal UI and how we can run chaos tests or chaos experiments through the UI. So the first thing is how we can do it via a terminal or a cloud environment where uh, we can basically run kubectl commands and the second is how we can uh, basically replicate the same that sort of a experience on the UI. So a little about me, uh, I'm Shyam. I am an SD intern at MyData and uh, I primarily work on the Litmus Chaos project which is also a, sand, a sandbox project at CNCF and uh, today I'm gonna speak about chaos engineering with that particular tool, tool set which is Litmus Chaos. So uh, to begin with what is chaos engineering and uh, why should you be interested in it? So this is the Google explanation of it uh, but I'll tell in a more simpler way. So chaos engineering is basically a way to generate or produce chaos in your application or in your system to break it basically so we uh, want to break your system in order to see how how uh, strong your system is and how much it can withstand so doing this generally uh, means why you do it uh, we do it because if we want to break a system and the system is strong enough then it'll, it can stand back up so that is one main thing we want to test in a system that how strong it is, how, how much withstanding capabilities it has. So that uh, let's say in the future uh, something breaks in your system or someone tries to attack your system, how resilient it can be to come back up. So that is basically a very important test that every uh, big companies like Amazon, Netflix, they all try and do chaos engineering. So Litmus is also a tool set which provides this similar sort of an experience. So now let's uh, jump into Katakura, what it is and uh, how will it be beneficial to us in the stock. So Katakura is basically an interactive learning and training platform. It's mostly uh, tuned in towards software engineers because it has tons of courses like uh, most other popular uh, course uh, websites but Katakura is not just a course website, it's uh, an interactive website where you can basically test out any, any applications put out by developers like me and you. So if you are uh, having any application that you are using and you want to put it out then you can basically do so in here. This, they provide an interactive cloud environment and in that environment you can run any, any experiments or any applications like you would normally do in your local system or local terminal. So they provide you a very interactive cloud environment where you can run uh, kubectl, minikube, uh, docker, any other commands that you would normally do. And those will be so in, the, in the form of a shell and that shell is the course that you're providing. So you can basically go ahead, take a look at the steps that needs to be done and then you can uh, imitate the same on the right side which will be the cloud terminal. So you can uh, have a very interactive uh, learning experience with Karakota. Next thing is a scenario. What is a scenario? So in Katakura, the courses basically are called as a scenario. So a scenario is mostly a guided path to learn a new technology or tool. So just like any, any course is about learning something, in Katakura you learn something, you learn a tool or a technology and they are in the form of scenarios. So scenarios are nothing but a step-by-step -step instruction, a step-by-step -step guide basically on to what to do next, what is the first step, what is the finishing, what to do after this, what will be what you will learn in the next one. So it's a general Really a combination of all of this together is called a scenario. So uh, the scenarios like I mentioned are run in pre-configured live environments which are pretty ready to use and they generally take about half a minute or a minute to boot up. So once it's booted up you can basically go ahead and uh, run anything you want. So as of now uh, Katakura supports only these technologies which are listed down here. So you have Docker, Kubernetes, GitHub, Jenkins and a couple of other very famous uh, tools you can see and I'm pretty sure they will be accommodating more in the coming years. So as of now these are the only uh, tools that uh, Katakura supports and you can feel free to go ahead and make a, a tutorial or a scenario on any one of them uh, of your own will. So uh, before we jump into uh, looking at the scenario or basically generating a chaos uh, experiment with Litmus on Katakura, we need to look at a few custom resources in Kubernetes which are required for running the chaos experiment with Litmus.
So the three main uh, custom resources that are there are uh, Chaos Engine, Chaos Experiment and Chaos Results. To uh, tell you all in a very brief way what those three are is uh, Chaos Engine is a resource which links uh, any Kubernetes application uh, or a Kubernetes node to a Chaos Experiment. The Chaos Experiment is a group of configuration parameters basically for your Chaos Experiment. So they, they, form, a, they form a group, a configuration group which has the configuration which would be required and uh, they are invoked by the Chaos Engine. Chaos results is uh, there is a resource basically which is used to hold the results of the chaos experiments that we'll run and uh, they generally use Prometheus, uh, Prometheus server to store all the like, metrics. So let's just uh, jump right into the implementation and uh, next up we'll look at the Catacoda screen and we'll go forward from there. So let me first stop sharing the, uh, stop this presentation and bring in the Catacoda screen. Uh, so I guess this is it. And I can mash it up with this one, yeah. So this is the Karakoda scenario basically, which I'll be talking about uh, as a part one for this uh, talk. Uh, so you can even, this is a public link, you can even go ahead and try the scenario for yourself. So the link is katakoda.com slash litmuspot and then you have a slash scenario and getting started. This you won't have to give, if you just give katakoda.com slash litmuspot, you'll automatically reach this one. And then you, you will basically find a, a tab or a, like a card which says getting started with litmus. You can just click on this to open up this. Uh, I already have done so because uh, like I mentioned before the cloud environment takes up a little bit of time half a minute or a minute to boot up so if I open up in this panel uh, you can see the cloud at the right side so this is already uh, opened so it hopefully it won't take much time to boot up that's why uh, you can uh, go ahead and skim through the definition of these what are they what is litmus and what are the, these are the three uh, chaos uh, resources the custom resources that I talked about you can uh, take a look at them and uh, why should you use litmus and also the how what will you be learning in this scenario of course i'll be giving you a brief walkthrough as well so you don't have to take a look at this right now so let me just uh, quickly go ahead and start the scenario so as you can see it says welcome to litmus uh, the reason same reason it already booted up and that was uh, the primary reason for me opening it up before so the first thing we are going to do is decide which application we are going to run the chaos against. So to be a very easy example, I wanted to run against Nginx and uh, we want to deploy the Nginx application first. So the very first thing is I'll check if kubectl and everything is running fine. So I'll just do a config view to see if they are up or not. Uh, I spelled kubectl wrong. kubectl config view. And yeah, it's it's up and running, so it should not be a problem. So the first thing we need to do is uh, we're going to apply apply chaos to nginx, and so we need to uh, deploy the nginx app first on our default namespace. So if I click on this, it will automatically start the deployment, and deployment has been created. So uh, to begin with, I'm gonna say clearly that we are not running uh, chaos on any particular namespace in this case. We are going to do it in a default namespace. So that's why uh, running it on a custom namespace is a little bit complicated, not that much, but we have to create our own uh, namespace first and then we need to go ahead and change our R back and the chaos engine and all the namespace uh, wherever they have been used basically. So we can definitely open up Vim and try to modify it, but for to keep it simple, I am trying everything on a default namespace. So uh, our Nginx application has been deployed we can go ahead and check if that is running or not and you can see the nginx uh, pod is already up and running now we'll continue on to the next step so the next step is to apply the litmus chaos uh, manifest now the litmus chaos operator uh, manifest is required uh, the reason why is because they uh, install the required service account configurations and the chaos operators and also the CRDs basically or the custom resources which are needed to run our chaos experiments so we need to apply the litmus chaos operator manifest first so we can do that by clicking on this and this should happen very quickly so it created all the different services account the RBAC, the role binding uh, so they both they are RBACs <coughs> the three uh, custom resources as you can see chaos engine experiments and chaos results 
Now we can go ahead and verify if the litmus namespace has been created or not by doing kubectl get namespace and you'll see litmus has been added. If you had done it previously, you would see you would not see litmus there before, but now that we have installed it, uh, we can see litmus. Let's go ahead and uh, continue to the next step. Now we need to verify if the litmus installation has been completed or not. Uh, litmus installation in the sense we already know the namespace is there, but we need to see if the CRDs and all the other, other things are present or not. So we can do a get pod minus and litmus and we'll see the chaos operator is running. Uh, we can verify if the CRDs have been installed or not. So we can do we can grab the chaos and we can we'll find the three uh, chaos engines experimental results. We can also go ahead and, and uh, grab chaos for API resources. Uh, I'm just going to skip this one. This is a very basic uh, verification. That's why. So let's go ahead and continue. We already know that everything is present, so we don't need to verify it like that. Now we need to install the experiment. So we need to figure out which experiment do we want to apply, like which. A chaos experiment do we want to apply and for that we have a very broad range of experiments basically we can go to chaos hub and this is the link hub.litmuschaos.io and what chaos hub is is it's, it's as the name suggests it's a hub of chaos experiments so you'll find tons of um, different experiments so right now we have 37 experiments and all these experiments have proper documentation as well as video explanations if you want to go ahead and if you want to take a look at how each experiment needs to be performed what are the exact steps so you'll find a step-by-step -step, uh, instruction as well as a video too so the chaos experiment we are going to perform is uh, pod delete it's going to be a very very easy experiment so it's going to be this one, generic pod delete, but still let me search for pod delete so that I can show you how many pod deletes we have. And we have Cassandra, CodeDNS, generic, and gate pod delete. So we are going for this uh, generic pod delete. And once we click on this generic pod delete, we'll find uh, an entire use, like an entire documentation of the particular uh, chaos experiment. So we have the video, like I said, and then we have this, all the different uh, steps that are required so you have you have the install the chaos experiment install the rbac and the sample chaos engine that is needed to run the chaos experiment basically so uh that's that uh, we are not going to use this since we already have the instructions in Caracoda. so just for a reference i i opened this up that you can also go ahead and check the different uh, experiments that are there present so we are gonna do pod delete as of now so what the first thing we need to do is install the pod delete, install the chaos experiment that we selected. So we need to install pod delete first and uh, in order to do it, we need to copy this YAML, uh, copy this uh, kubectl command. So it's kubectl apply minus f and then the experiment. So it's generic pod delete slash experiment YAML. So once we apply that, we can see that pod delete has been created. It should be some, yeah. So chaos experiment pod delete has been created. Now we can go ahead and verify. We can get the chaos experiment and we should see pod delete. So it, it, the pod delete experiment got created seven seconds ago. So the uh, chaos experiment hasn't been started yet. We have installed it only. We haven't started the uh, chaos yet. To start the chaos, we would require chaos engine. So we have installed it. We have installed the pod delete. Now we can go ahead and continue to the next step. Now next is installing the RBAC. Now the reason why is we would need a service account to allow Chaos Engine to run experiments in our application namespace. So that's why we need an RBAC YAML and just because this is the default namespace we can just go ahead and directly uh, apply this and this should be fine. In case it was a custom namespace you would have to uh, like download it and uh, like wget it and then we need to open it up in vim and change the namespace to whatever the custom namespace we had created so this is a pretty simple we can just click on it and it will be applied so we can see the service account uh, would have been created there you go service account pod delete sa which is service account created and the other rbac rule bindings have also been created with it so we can just simply go ahead and continue uh, now the next step is annotation the reason we need annotation is it's sort of a security measure and it is also used as a means to reduce the blast radius. So uh, this is a pretty important step that is required before we invoke basically any chaos experiment. So we can go ahead and click on this. This will annotate our application. Then we can continue simply. Now we can check our current pods. The this step, why this step is required is we can see the difference between the two when we have what is the current number of pods and once we apply the chaos, when we once we run the chaos, how many pods gets created. 
So we'll have a kiosk runner, we'll have uh, multiple pods, we'll see container being created and container being running and completed. And lots of things going to happen, we'll be watching it in a watch step. So we can go ahead and uh, get pods, we'll see there's only one, which is Nginx, which is pretty obvious like we saw before as well. So we have uh, Nginx which was created 7 minutes ago. Now we can, what we can do is we can run the kiosk and this is the chaos engine once we apply the chaos engine our uh, experiment that we installed will be triggered so we can apply it this is the pod delete chaos engine so chaos engine has been applied and we installed the pod delete experiment so the pod delete chaos got uh, triggered now the next thing what we can do is watch watch the pods and we can see nginx chaos runner and this is the runner which is uh, injecting kiosk in our application and now you can see pod delete this has been started the kiosk has been started now this container has been created it will soon be running once it's running you will find uh, tons of other things as well So we'll take it'll take a little bit of time since uh, this is first of all a cloud environment, so that is number one. Secondly, the chaos experiments do take up a little bit of time since they spawn up quite some instances. So it'll quickly spawn a few more, uh, probably two, two more. Okay, so now all of them are in running state. We can basically uh, stop this particular uh, watch and clear the console and go to the next uh, step to see the results. Most probably it will be in awaited state. And yeah, the result is in awaiting state. So it's still awaited. The experiment pod delete is uh, currently awaited. Its age is 44 seconds. So the chaos ran for 44 seconds. If I try this again, uh, we can see that the chaos result has passed and the past is 6 seconds ago, the chaos experiment passed. So uh, your your application is uh, pretty resilient. Uh, we applied chaos to it, we terminated the pod but it still got recreated and your application is good to go. So that's why uh, the chaos uh, passed. So that's, that's that for, uh, let me just do it once more. for. Confirmation, yeah, so it passed 34 seconds ago. So that's that, that's how you can basically run chaos, any any chaos experiments, you can go to chaos and choose any particular chaos experiment and use litmus to uh, run chaos in your applications as well and check your applications resiliency. So that's uh, that for the category scenario, you can basically emulate this entire thing in your own personal terminal. Uh, and if I click on continue the scenario will finish and then what are the next steps so the next step are to uh, run the chaos in a custom namespace obviously and uh, that will be a little a little I would say 1% extra hard not not more than that it's very simple and uh, to create multiple scenarios uh, with imitating other experiments that we have on chaos this one is just for pod delete we'll have uh, plenty others uh, as well which are there in chaos Hub. so creating scenarios for those so those are the next steps and uh, yeah so that's how we do it uh, via the terminal or via code via kubectl commands now i'm going to show you how you can do it via the ui and uh, here comes the litmus portal so i'm going to bring in the litmus portal uh, the litmus uh, github repository basically and that's the root of everything so I can show you the litmus project as well as the portal I'm going to go ahead and close this and the chaos hub uh, since we don't need it as of now so yeah this is the litmus project so the url is github.com slash litmus chaos slash litmus and uh, you can find all the different uh, uh, descriptions details here I'm going to talk about the portal and the portal is what handles the UI part of it so you can run experiments and you can do all sort of thing in portal so portal gives you much more control over your clusters over your uh, agents workflow agents all sorts of things but in this uh, talk we'll particularly look at uh, how you can run the same same uh, the same experience so you'll get a developer experience of running it uh, on 
using the kubectl commands as well as how you can do it in the UI. So this is the part in portal where I'll show you how you can do it via the portal UI. So Litmus, provide, uh, Litmus portal provides uh, you a console and UI experience for managing, uh, monitoring and events. So the platforms uh, that it currently supports uh, is uh, Minikube, GK, uh, Kine, EKS as well as Octeto Cloud. So you can go ahead and try it in any of those. Uh, you would obviously require Kubernetes 1.1 or later in order to run any of your applications, uh, any of your chaos experiments or chaos applications in order to uh, run any of your chaos experiments. So let's uh, jump into the portal. So the portal, what you can do to run the portal is you would find a very nice guide. So basically this is the installation step of applying the KTS manifest. Uh, you can uh, try this one which is the cluster scope and this is the taken from master so you would find litmus slash master this is our uh, latest release 1.9 uh, you can go for this but uh, I would suggest you can go for the cluster scope uh, you can apply this and you can basically go ahead uh, to the wiki of uh, the repository and find uh, go to litmus portal develop development guide and you'd find a very nice step by step uh, instructions of how you can run the what are the prerequisites how you can run the back end how you can run the front end and all sorts of things so i already have the portal up and running i'll just uh, bring that in so uh, because i have the this repository cloned in my local system i would simply go to the code to this uh, repository basically in my local system and I can basically do an npm start provided I am in the front end yeah I'm in the front end directory so I can do an npm start uh, and this would uh, boot up the local server which is yes I want to run it in a different port uh, so this will start up the development server and this should be up and running in about a minute or so since this is a development server dev server takes up a little bit of time sometimes so we are going to wait for that for a bit once the server is up I can show you the UI of the portal okay so the server is up uh, we can go ahead and take a look and uh, yeah this is the login page of our portal uh, I'll be logging in as an admin so that I get full privileges uh, over anything I do uh, let me log in and once it logs in you will see that uh, it has options it has plenty of options like uh, connecting targets connecting your clusters then you can uh, schedule your own workflow you can view a predefined uh, you can schedule a predefined workflow you can view any workflow see analytics and we're gonna see all of that in just a minute so this is the welcome screen so I'm gonna start in as a new user so uh, I'm the administrator because I logged in as an admin uh, my project name uh, let's say uh, I, it can be a uh, demo continue uh, my full name is my name I can continue the password will be same so that I don't forget uh, continue and email is let's say a uh, very basic email and let's start okay so uh, it sends a request to the backend which updates the user and there you go so I am welcome I am being welcomed to this new page which is the main home page of the Litmus portal so from the portal I can see predefined workflows I can go ahead and schedule my own workflow I can see the uh, the latest uh, community uh, analytics of how many experiments have been run this week, this year, and uh, there are pretty some survey links and the docs links. In the right side, uh, in the left side, in the sidebar panel, basically, I can go to settings and change my own personal settings. I can change my email address, change my password, and all sorts of things. I can send invite to my teammates. Uh, I can manage users, and this is this would not be present if you are not an admin. Uh, but you can uh, go ahead and see your own team so in the community as well you can see the community analytics you can check out the blogs on dev and that's that so it's a pretty broad uh, topic so in this uh, you in this talk particularly we're going to look at uh, scheduling the pod delete experiment through the ui uh, so if i go to workflow i will see there's no records available because we have a uh, not schedule any single workflows of now i just logged in as a new user as a new admin user so i'm going to go back to home and schedule my first workflow so what i'm going to do is uh, choose an active cluster at this point uh, i won't have any since i just logged in so it should be none 
so what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, create my uh, wait a minute so I need to go to targets and I should see my self cluster now the reason I see a self cluster is because we have two different type of clusters the target cluster can be internal as well as external so the internal is what is called the self cluster which is our cluster the external could be any cluster so you can provide your own uh, cluster so if I connect a new target you would have to apply the manifest uh, manifest will be generated for you you would have to apply the manifest in your uh, Kubernetes in your cluster console and then you can uh, of course connect your own personal cluster that is for external clusters if I go to external I should not have any since uh, this is just an internal one so this is already active so the cluster is active now I can go back to home and schedule a workflow I should be able to see the self cluster which wasn't previously there now that is active I can select the self cluster select and continue now I have all this different experiments as of now in the in the litmus portal so I, I can see a pod delete here so I, I'm gonna go ahead and select the pod delete so I can edit my workflow name right now it's saved as Argo whatever whatever uh, chaos for delete 160 something ID I can go ahead and click on next I'll be I'll be given a YAML file I can go ahead and uh, go ahead and take a look at it uh, in a much broader detail but this is basic YAML that is being generated on any pod delete experiment and if you go to the bottom you'll see the chaos engine right up here so you have uh, uh, the chaos engine kind is a chaos engine metadata namespace spec and this is a cube system namespace it, the app in for the app namespace is cube system it has an app label and app kind you can go ahead and take a much deeper look into this but I'm gonna just go ahead and trust it blindly and I'm gonna go click on next so this is the uh, pod delete how much weightage of the experiment do I want to give I can of course modify it and change it I'm gonna give it 10 which is the full weight I'm gonna schedule uh, the workflow now so the summary of the workflow is that this is a name that was created at the very first step the description is it deletes a pod scheduling now it's not a recurring schedule it's scheduling now and the adjusted weight is 10 so I can of course go ahead and uh, view the YAML again if I want to go if I want to change anything at this point or I can go back and change it or change it from here so I'm gonna finish it now this uh, workflow will be uh, scheduled for me so now you can see the workflows table which earlier had no records now has a running workflow so this is the workflow that was just created this is another pod delete this is the same pod delete I mean uh, you can go ahead and show the workflow click on this and you can get a very graphical view of the entire workflow so if I click on info this will toggle the right sidebar will toggle and you can see the workflow name the state the start time the namespace and uh, the currently running nodes so the currently running node yellow is the uh, node that is currently being running uh, this color is for pending and you see another color which is uh, green which is for uh, successful experiments red is for failed experiments or failed nodes or anything so if this particular node fails only this will be turned red and this will be in pending state because it never uh, went through the pipeline so uh, currently this is the uh, running node uh, now the install experiment is running okay it, uh, succeeded very fast and now you have run run chaos as the running node so executed nodes is install experiments currently running is this one as well as run chaos is pending so it's not in the currently running ones so we will soon find run chaos as well in the currently running nodes we are going to wait for it so this things probably take a little bit of time I can go ahead and uh, probably open up a new terminal where I can do a kubectl get pods minus n litmus because I want to see it in the litmus namespace and there you go I can see the pod delete chaos runner is being created so run chaos has been created and that is why it's not showing up as an executed node so I can go back and now it's created so uh, it's it's done yellow so I can see run chaos in the running nodes as well as well, as of now so this is a very nice uh, way of representing uh, visualizing your uh, experiments uh, the one which we didn't had in a terminal view so we had only we can see only the uh, the experiments in a very raw format by only watching it uh, but here we get a much uh, verbose view of the experiment how what's happening and uh, which uh, nodes is currently running, which fails, which is not, 
we can also go ahead and check this uh, another thing which is uh, show the analytics so I'm gonna show you a better view of the analytics once this finishes uh, so the home page would actually change to something else so now the home page will give me analytics about uh, one experiment that I ran so if I run more uh, more experiments the home page will shift accordingly so it will show me a graph it will show me a, a basically a graph of how uh, my experiments ha have been proceeding so we are gonna wait for a few more minutes uh, so it, it's been three minutes already it's probably taking up a little bit of time I can do another check and uh, yeah so the pod delete this has been completed the others are in, are, are in running phase we are going to wait for a few minutes okay so the run chaos uh, just got executed and now you can see run chaos as well as install experiments the two that are green uh, in the executed nodes now reward chaos will be uh, performed so whatever the chaos has been happening uh, it will be reverted back to its original state and there you go uh, the, the entire uh, experiment passed and we can see it's the state has succeeded start time five minutes ago and end time is just now so it ran for about 4.8 minutes which is a little long it should be around three minutes or something but sometimes it takes up a bit, bit of time so the cluster is self cluster if you had connected an external one it would have been that and the namespace is litmus so that's that's that uh, if I click on it uh, I can see individual node informations so the node type is pod the node phase is succeeded start time is this and other different uh, ex details or particular node now I can if I go to the home page and uh, notice that the home page will be uh, different so the home page is something like this now so I have average uh, result I have the average amount of workflow that I run which is one per week because I only ran one this is the sort of a graph which I get the more I run the more this will be this will start populating so just like just now I have only run one I am a new admin user so it's only one in this uh, particular uh, graph as of now so yeah that's uh, that's that uh, I can also go ahead and uh, take a look at the templates so these are the default templates uh, that are there and yeah that's that for uh, this talk so I hope uh, you guys enjoyed it and uh, I hope you guys learned a lot about chaos uh, experiments how you can run it uh, with the litmus uh, portal without the litmus portal with the litmus manifest and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, have a great day